Greetings out there in YouTube land. This is Morris Man, and as always, I thank you guys for coming to my channel. I'm going to entitle this video A Song's Vibe because I kind of touched on this in the last video I posted uh, about eBay, no remote included. And the reason why I went in search of a dad machine is because uh, years ago I wrote this song and I had the foresight at that time to drop it, the master down to a dad because I'm like, I'm going to come back to this if nothing happens with this anytime soon. Because I wrote it for a, a band that uh, they actually never got a chance to record that one. They had recorded other compositions I wrote, but they didn't get a chance to record that one. So uh, I redid it for my current CD that I'm working on. <coughs> and the reason why I'm doing this video because of this topic. As a songwriter, and you songwriters out there can attest to this, there's some songs that you have written and then you've recorded them, and the vibe was just there. Just that, that magic was there that moment during the time of the session. And then it's hard to replicate that same song in the studio maybe years later. Because for some reason, you just can't capture that vibe anymore. You know, so uh, that's the, the situation with the song that I just recently uh, redid. I'm like, I don't like the drums. I like the drums on the original one I used to uh, TR-808. Had that SOS type of uh, tell me if you still care type of vibe going on. Love the drum program. And it was just hard to replicate that. So, again, you know, I redid it. But I was like, I'm not feeling it like I feel the original. You know, and that's important because there's just some songs you can't replicate. You know, there's some songs that I can't replicate. Sounds good as the original, even better. But just... It's something about, you know, that time of that moment in your life and just having the right instruments, the right people around you and everything is just flowing. And it's just hard to replicate that because there's another song that I wrote, too. And actually, this particular song is called I'm the One That Loves You. That's the song that kind of put me on the map as far as a songwriter. When I submitted it to a publishing company uh, or the publisher, she loved it. That was the first song I put on the demo. And. I can never replicate that song. And here's one of the reasons why. Uh, I'm not a keyboard player, but, you know, I write the majority of my songs on keyboard. And I had a Roland. I want to say it was the uh, it was a sampler, the S10. So I was playing this really nice pin, uh, Fender Rose sound on on uh, sampler. And what I did know at that time the key signatures were shifted. It wasn't uh, a standard piano where you hit middle C and this is middle C. You know, uh, everything for some reason was or was transposed down or up. So as I'm playing these chords, it's not the chords that I think I'm playing. So when I get to a regular piano, that's standard, you know, tuning and uh, it's not a sampler. It's just, you know, uh, uh, sound patches in there. I can't even find the chords anymore. You know, and, and the chords that I played on the regular piano now, they're kind of close, but they're not really exactly. It's kind of like that R. Kelly's Honey Love. Uh, I've tried to play that song. My keyboard tried to play it. And for some reason, I think that uh, the recording or the pitch shift was shifted slightly. So it's in between keys. So you can't really nail those chords and sound like the record. So that's the situation with the very first song or the first song that I got published. Uh, I love that song, but I can never, ever do it again. Or if I do it, it won't sound like the original. So I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to leave it alone. You know, just, just some songs, you can't recapture that magic, you know. But like I said, I had the foresight when I wrote this other song dr to drop the master down to that as well as real to real. Because all of my real to reels have gotten away. And unless you keep those real to reels in a controlled environment, uh, they actually basically disintegrate. They become useless. You know, the tape sticks to each other. And when you reel it out to kind of, you know, try to get it to play, it's just it's just a mess. It's kind of like the equivalent to women that were into minks in the 70s. They didn't keep those minks in the house all year long. They took them to a cleaners who had a vault. And uh, they put them in there for storage throughout the summertime. Because if you left them out in the humidity, uh, the fur would fall off the coat. You know, because I remember going to a cleaners one day and seeing that they had this huge vault. And I was like, what's that big old vault for? Because it looked like a bank vault. And it's like, that's where they, they keep the minks. I was like, oh, didn't know that. Same thing with the real to real. So uh, that's why, again, I had the foresight to say, let me also drop the master down to a little dat machine, a little tape. So if I got to refer back to it sometime in the, in the future, far future, it's there. So I did find it. 
and I'm going to, uh, I purchased already a DAT machine, so the DAT machine will be here next week, so I'm going to drop uh, it from DAT to digital, recording a device, and then I'm going to get started, because I'm really excited about that, because again, I've done that song several times, and it just didn't sound like when we when I did it the very first time, so I'm very glad that I was able to save some of that stuff, so again, in future use, I can refer back to it. Because I know, and I'm going to say this, technically, I know it's on one of the DAT tapes that I have. And for some reason, I don't know why, maybe I was crazy during that period, one thinking I didn't write down the labels, you know. But I know it's on one of these cause, uh, D- DAT tapes, so I got to painstakingly go through these because uh, I know it's on there. Because I've heard it when I had a DAT machine several years ago, and for some reason, I should have dropped it down then to a CD, but... I got rid of the DAT machine, so now I got the DAT tape play uh, tapes and uh can't use them because I have no DAT machine, you know. But again, I just thought I would post this video because I thought it was important to kind of mention that for up and coming writers. Uh, they're just some songs that you've written that were just they were just there. Everything, with, all the elements were there at that particular time. It's just hard to replicate. You just can't go back and replicate what you did though during that period of time you know you come close or you can do a version of it but it's like it's just not like the one that i originally did with those tr808 drums and and the way that i had this pan and i had this particular sound patch working and i don't have a sound patch that's close to that but this to do and all that you know things of the nature because i'm gonna say this and i'm gonna sign off and sonic eps to me have some of the best sample sounds i've ever heard because the reason why i think that song stood out on the original because I used the Steinway sample and the Steinway sample was beautiful. It sounded really good. It sounded like a Steinway, you know, because piano to me, spectral electric piano, acoustic piano, it's the hardest and along with guitar, it's the hardest instruments to really uh, sample or play on a keyboard to make it sound realistic. The majority of the guitar patches as far as like the distortion sound like crap. It sounds like a piano trying to emulate a guitar. Same thing with pianos. It's very hard to find a really good acoustic piano because you can get some good electric uh, road sounds off these modules, but for the most part, it's very difficult because my Roland JV880 has a decent acoustic piano, but when you strike it and when it kind of, you know, fades out, it has this really nasty sound to it. But if it's buried in the mix, you know, and you're just playing chords where you're not hitting sustain and just kind of da 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 You can kind of get away with it. But when you just got a bad self in a ballad setting and you hitting that and hitting that sustain or using the pedal, it sounds awful. You know, and uh, it's very few piano modules that really have a really good piano sound. Uh, now I'm working off of the Sonic ZR, what's that, ZR76 piano sounds in that thing. It's just incredible because they have a whole uh, expansion board called uh, I think it's called the perfect piano and it sounds like a real Steinway or Boisendorf piano you know so I'm going to sign off now but I just thought I would post this video because uh, you know I thought it might be interesting and informative to you young up and coming songwriters and some of you seasoned or intermediate songwriters to take to, to next time take care thanks for watching